Guys, in this video, we're going to talk about how to take the data from part one of your spring lab and turn it into a good graph in which you can find the correct equation for the spring force exerted by your spring. Now, this is something like what your data will perhaps look like. I imagine nobody has exactly this data. If you do, I'm sorry, but whatever. Your data could look something like this, right? You uh, hung a certain amount of mass from the spring. This right here is the initial length of the spring as you carefully measured it with a meter stick. And then this is the final length of the spring. Uh, and then extension is the difference between those two values. And, and all right, fine. Over here, I'm calculating the weight, which is the mass times gravity. And then I relisted the extension uh, in order to make it easier for me to make a graph out of it. Now, in full disclosure, I am literally going to make every mistake possible in processing this so that you can see all of the wrong things and therefore not do them. All right, so actually, here's your first wrong thing. Is this entire row? Just no. That you know, this is not at all what your data should include. Okay, so if you did include this data point, you need to delete it and then uh, try to get another measurement. Okay, you have to have at least five data points to have uh, good data here. The reason you can't use this one is uh, your spring has what's called a loading force, if you recall, right? We said the spring force was kx plus b. All right, so if it's kx plus b, the b represents the minimum force required to start the thing moving, or excuse me, not moving, but extending, okay? So this is the minimum weight that you would have to hang in order to stretch the spring even a tiny bit, right? Really just to make it go slack, right? Not have the coils tightly pressed together. Um, so that would mean that you can't use zero as a data point because you might also perhaps be able to hang, uh, I don't know, 10 grams, 15 grams, something like that before it would actually begin stretching. In other words, uh, this data point doesn't work because you could very easily perhaps have hung, I don't know, 0.05 on before it actually starts, in theory, stretching. All right, so many different values of mass would give you an extension of zero, which is going to totally jack up your graph. All right, so if you have a data point in which you have zero extension, get rid of it, okay? Here we go. I'm just going to delete that whole stupid row, right? I don't even want that one. All right. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to note is that I, in the data table, told you put these in meters. All right, fine. If you put them in centimeters and you label them as such, that's okay. But as you're going to see in a little bit, if I make a graph where I do, oh, say, weight versus extension in centimeters, I am not at all going to get a reasonable looking graph. All right, now, as a reminder, uh, we said the, the spring force was probably going to be kx plus b. k is, uh, I don't know, it depends on your spring. Um, all of the springs we have are probably going to be somewhere between like 20 and 50. So if you get 55, don't freak out. I'm just saying probably between 20 and 50 is reasonable. But if you're getting 2,000, that's definitely wrong. And if you're getting like 0 0.04, that's also very definitely wrong, okay? So if you have, you know, depending on your spring, between 20 and 50, you're probably okay. Check the box, okay? The, most of them came in a box. And if they were the colored ones, those are the ones in the box. Those, actually, it says on the box approximately what it should be. Um, and then if you had one of the gray springs, uh, those ones are all around 30. Okay, for the loading force, the loading force should be a small positive number. Well, how small, Mr. Erico? It depends on the spring. Um, some of them, it's like, like very small, like 0.4. Others, it's more like 1.2 newtons, okay? So it depends on the spring. So as long as it's a small positive number, you're fine. 
All right, now the graph I was supposed to make is weight versus extension. So I guess I'm not actually going to make every possible mistake. I won't graph mass versus extension because, please, I'm not that much of an amateur. Okay, so weight versus extension. If you forgot how to calculate weight, that's mg. All right, now here's my chart. And uh, let me see. Okay, first thing is I'm going to put that one in its own um, sheet to make it a little bit easier to look at. Um, and when I go to print this, of course, I don't want it to be just this tall. I, my screen is oddly proportioned, and that's why it's like this. Um, okay, now, next thing is I'm going to click Edit Chart. Now, I right here have five data points showing nicely, so that's good. Um, however, you might only have four despite um, having, oh, I don't know, uh, five data points, all right? And so often this one right here um, is, is messing things up. So I have use row one as headers. That's fine because row one was actually just headers. It was the name extension and weight. Okay. Um, and then it says use column. Uh, I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, let me not talk about that. Okay. So set up. Great. Everything looks good here. Uh, and now what I really, really want on here is a trend line. All right, now, how can I get a trend line? Oh, that's going to be under, gosh, I hope, series. I'm just going to fumble around. Oh, look at that. First try. Trend line. Hey, there's a trend line. Um, it doesn't have an equation. Oh, that's right. Remember, we can go down here and we can, for label, for some reason, that's why they have, uh, where they have use equation show r squared values. My r squared is 1. I have a really good line. Okay, now, what is wrong with this? Well, for one thing, uh, it has, um, I have a spring constant of 4.11. Um, I don't think so, because remember the equation is going to be kx plus b. So if you have it graphed correctly, the slope should be k, because it's kx plus uh, b. There's the, the loading force. 2.08 uh, would be OK, but this is negative 2.08. There's something wrong there. Uh, and part of the reason why, glancing at it, it kind of looked like it was OK, right? This looks like a positive y-intercept is because this graph doesn't go all the way to 0 for the horizontal axis. So let me see if I can. Uh, change that here. Here we go. Minimum value zero. Oh no, you can see that it crosses the x-axis before it crosses the y. Oh, disaster. All right, now what did I do wrong? Well, there's nothing wrong with my data because um, in theory it's something that I uh, quote measured, but primarily the problem here is actually my axes are flipped. If the equation is f equals kx plus b, Well, then f should be my y-axis. All right, what is f? f is the weight. Uh, in fact, literally, it happens to be in the column f. That's just a lucky coincidence. Um, the weight is the force that was applied to the spring. All right, and the extension should be my x-axis. And if I look at this chart, it says extension is here and weight is there, and that's backwards. Oh, no. All right. Well, I'm going to go back to Edit Chart. And under Setup, oh, I can click Switch Rows and Columns. And I, oh, no, that did not do it. Oh, no. All right. Well, since that didn't do it, um, what I can do instead is switch this. Oh, hang on. No, I just got to go back to here. All right. So let me start over. I'm going to put all of my weight values in the next column. No, no. There we go. And now, for whatever reason, when I graph this, it's going to put it... Oh my gosh, what did it just do? This is kind of funny, guys. Column chart? I don't think so. How about scatter plot? There we go. 
Okay, a little better. Uh, I undid some of the things I just did, uh, but you know, hopefully you won't make any of those same mistakes because now you know if you put the extension as your first column, then it will uh, put those as your x values. All right, so now um, I have the equation showing and just got to put this thing in its own sheet. Okay, so there it is, a little bit better, and I... Oh man, I've got a positive loading force, but look at my slope. It's just, it's just rotten. What is the deal? All right, well, let's go back here and see if there's something the matter. Hmm, my extension. I don't get it. I have my extension of four meters and 7.9 meters. And oh, now there's the problem. If your extension is in centimeters, then actually what your graph is showing is weight in newtons versus extension in centimeters, which means this is newtons per centimeter, which is no good. Um, so you need to make sure that your extension values are scaled correctly. So I had an extension of four centimeters, apparently, for the first uh, weight value. I need to divide all those numbers by a hundred to make them be centimeters, or excuse me, meters instead of centimeters. All right, now when I go back here, I have uh, weight on the correct axis, extension on the correct axis, just like I wanted, and now my slope is more reasonable. 24.3 could be a spring constant for one of your springs, and the loading force is 0 0.507. That's a small positive number. So I'm all good. All right, looks like everything checks out here. The only thing that I could wish for would be that the units would show up in my labels. Well, actually, there's an easy way to do that. If you told it to um, use the first row as the headers, then if you put the unit labels right there in the column heading, then when I go back to the chart, it didn't get it. Okay, well, it would get it. The <laughs> Had I had it in there in the first place, I think it would have actually displayed correctly. So I will have to, I guess, add in my units, extension measured in meters, and the weight measured in newtons. Okay, well, there we are. Um, hope that was helpful, and there will be another video in short order about how to process your data from part two of the Spring Lab. And uh, one more thought before I go, that's if you're like, I don't like Sheets, I don't like Excel, can I please just use Vernier Graphical Analysis? The answer is absolutely yes. Um, all the comments I made here with the exception of like the technical difficulties are relevant, right? You got to have weight as your vertical axis, extension as your horizontal axis, uh, don't use zero kilograms and zero meters of extension as a data point. Uh, and do make sure that your extension is measured in centimeters, or excuse me, is measured in meters, not centimeters. Uh, and also that you're not graphing mass versus extension. It really needs to be weight. But you could absolutely use Vernier graphical analysis. Uh, it's a, a perfectly acceptable tool for exactly this sort of thing. All right, thanks. Hope that was helpful.